Hi guys! So there's a couple things I want to talk to you about today and I apologize for my appearance because I'm having a lazy Tuesday. I didn't have to go into the office. I'm working from home so I didn't bother to put on makeup or you know real clothes. I'm hanging out in my sweatpants. But there's a couple things I want to talk to you about today. The first is this book that I told you before I was reading, The Inner Temple of Witchcraft. And I don't know if anybody else is reading this book, but um, I, I actually am not that far. I've read the first four chapters, and uh, so I haven't even gotten to lesson one yet, which is The Magical Mind. The last chapter I read was chapter four, The Witch's Path, <clears throat> and at the end of this uh, chapter is where you do, I don't know if you can read this or not, you do an intention ritual, and it tells you exactly how to do it. And basically what this does is um, expresses your intentions to study the path for a year and a day. And then at the end of the year and the day, that is when you do your initiation ritual and actually dedicate yourself if that is what you choose after a year of study. So I've done my ritual. This is the candle that I used for the ritual. And this is my scroll with my intentions. Um, and I'm going to find a a place to keep those because you end up using them at the end of the year in the day so I need to find somewhere special where they won't be damaged but I've just conducted this ritual myself and I've been reading the first four chapters it's the reason it's taken me so long is because this book is jam-packed full of information and really good information and I find myself reading a little bit and then going online to find out more information or reading a little bit and comparing it to other books or reading a little bit and just really thinking hard on it um, and it's, it's very interesting. I'm, I'm wondering if any of you are reading this book at this time, uh, because I think it would be really cool to have someone, uh, maybe who's going through this at the same time and we can kind of do the lessons, um, maybe within a, a similar time frame and, and discuss them back and forth. Or if you've already studied this book, um, and you have some good insights, then maybe we can talk a little bit. Um, so if you are doing this, please comment or do a video response um, or even like my Facebook page because I would love to get like a little back and forth going because I think this is a really, really interesting book. Um, I've pretty much finished the Scott uh, Cunningham book for uh, Wicca for the Solitary Practitioner. Um, I've been, you know, it's a very, it's a good book. It's a very good book. It's very stripped down, I think, to the absolute basics to make it as easy as most understandable as possible. If I could talk, that really made no sense. But the book, um, it's very good for beginners. It's a good, like, dip your toes in the water introductory. Um, but a lot of the information I kind of already knew because I've been watching YouTube videos for a couple months and doing a lot of reading online articles and things. And so a lot of the information that's in that book, I kind of already had learned just from basic research. Um, but it is good, and I think it'll be a good reference, you know, the, the back where he does his, um, like, mini Book of Shadows. It's, it's good information, and it'll be a good little reference guide for me as I'm continuing on. But I think that this particular book right here, um, it, it's just going to be phenomenal from what I've read in the first four chapters. And like I said, it's not very far. I'm, I think, maybe 70, yeah, 70 pages into it, and it's just, it's jam-packed. So I'm really enjoying this book, and um, yeah, I would love to get get a conversation going on with anybody else who's reading this book or interested in reading this book or who has read this book and has things to say. So, um, you know, like I said, get in touch with me on YouTube or on Facebook. I'd love to talk about it with you. <clears throat> the second thing I wanted to talk about now is um, something I read, because I, I was reading this, this this morning, that's why... Um, I've done the intention ritual and and whatnot, but I was reading in here, and it you know I've read it in a lot of the stuff that I've been reading online and seen it in the videos, but it talks about the earth being alive, not just this thing that we live on and things that live on the earth are alive, but that witches and Wiccans and pagans in general, we see the earth as a living thing, and everything is connected. Um, we're you know kind of like a cell. If you took, you know, biology 101 or whatever in high school or college, even in middle school, I think they do nowadays, but, um, it's like a cell and we're all part of the, the little, um, little parts that make up the cell, the living organisms. So, 
Um, I thought it was an interesting way to look at it. That's one of the things I love about paganism is that you can connect the spiritual and the magical with the science of it all. And it really flows together well and makes sense. But the reason I bring this up, and I'm about to let my nerd flag fly, uh, is because I remember a few years ago when that movie Avatar came out. And it was like the blockbuster of the summer, and it was set to be the highest grossing movie of all time, and it was just this huge obsession for people. And I remember reading these articles about people who would come out of the movie theater feeling depressed and suicidal because they longed for the beauty of Pandora, and they thought that there was nothing in this world that was like Pandora and um, it was just, it was the ultimate utopia, and it made them feel, I couldn't believe it made people feel suicidal. And there was all these articles about how people were depressed because our world um, seemed gray and everything seemed meaningless after seeing the beauty of the animals and the people and the interconnectedness of the, the planet Pandora. And I just thought to myself, these people are Looney Tunes. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. But I mean that in the, the fact that, um, you know, that can be our world. Obviously, we don't have the same animals and, and plants and things, but, and I especially think that pagans see this because you, you see the inner connectiveness of everything. You know, we could be, we could live as one with nature if we wanted to. Um, you know, humans are depleting the world's resources. But people who, you know, want to make this world a beautiful place are out there actively working to do it, um, you know, through act being activists for the environment and for animals, um, through their everyday life, just in uh, growing their own food or recycling or trying to find ways to improve the earth, not littering, picking up trash when you see it, um, you know, just all these things that we can do as people to try to get back to our roots. I mean, <clears throat> I just, I think it's really interesting and I don't know, I don't know why it just kind of jumped into my head that I suddenly remembered all these things that I had seen in the news and, and online about this movie. But I just think it's interesting that people long for this, this ideal, but they are not doing anything for it. You know, and part of it is our own human nature. I mean, in the world of Pandora, you sleep on the ground or in a tree and you hunt animals with your own bare hands and you, you know, you, you eat what you catch and, and we're so used to our cushy houses and our sleeping in our warm beds and going to the grocery store, which is where the food comes from. And you know, we want these things, but we don't want to do the work to get them. So I think it's just interesting that these people were suicidal. Um, and I, I haven't done a lot of research, but I haven't really seen any articles where these people who were trying to cope with this avatar to depression, um, went out and actually did something with their lives to try to reach this goal or this utopia. So, I don't know, I just, I think it's interesting. I mean, when I personally, when I want something, when I have a goal or I'm depressed about something and I see a need for change, I try to do something about it. Um, like this pagan path that I'm on in this book. It's just, it's amazing to me that people, instead of seeing the positive and seeing this is what I can do, they think well, this will never be. So... You know, when I started on this path, I automatically started, uh, you know, finding ways to recycle even more than I already was. I've since tried planting a little garden um, to see how I, I do at it. Um, I have, you know, since tried taking better care of myself. I have tried, I've ordered herbs because I want to learn more about herbs and natural healing and um, kitchen witchery, I guess you could say. So all these little things that I'm starting to do because I see an ultimate goal, um, you know, and we could all do that. We can all do these things. You know, I, I work really hard now at trying to plan my trips so that I'm not wasting as much gas because before I was like, well, I pay for it. I'm going to use it. And, you know.
conclusion. Um, and, you know, as I've always believed that the earth was sacred and that we were all connected, but I didn't really see a way to get there. And so I was just like, well, when in Rome. And now I am trying to take more personal responsibility because I think now more than ever that our lives are shaped the way we create them, um, that everything is done by our own choices, um, you know, and how we react to certain things. So I just, I thought that was very interesting. I thought it was an interesting correlation. And uh, I kind of wonder what your guys' thoughts are. Um, if you remember reading those articles about the Avatar depression and how people were, you know, just completely, completely down and out and, and even to the point of suicide because they didn't understand the meaning of life anymore and what their purpose was. Um, when they saw this beautiful interconnectedness, when we can go outside and take off our shoes and bask in the sunshine and wiggle our toes in the grass and we can feel the interconnectedness, we can feel that connection between the, the environment and ourselves and spirit and, and it's a beautiful thing. And you may not always know what it is, but you can feel it. And it was interesting to me that people, uh, forgot it or got away from it to the point that they, they wanted to die. Maybe think, maybe they thought they would die and be reincarnated in a place that was more to their liking. Um, I don't know how committing suicide brings you to utopia personally. I think these are people again, who aren't willing to do the work to get to what they want. And I think that follows along a lot with the pagan belief system. Um, oh gosh, I can't believe this. <laughs> This is already a 12 minute video, so I'm sorry for dragging this out so long, but you know, with the pagan belief system, it's like, as from what I understand of reincarnation and kind of my own beliefs, you know, our soul or our spirit designs a plan for us. And when we we're born, we're supposed to try to attain the goal of that plan. Uh, but you have to put in the work. You don't, you aren't just born into whatever you want to be born into, uh, you have to get there by working towards it and and gaining wisdom and knowledge and and that is how you get to spiritual enlightenment. So these people who thought that maybe they would commit suicide and be in, reincarnated in a planet where it was more uh, primordial, more primeval, you know, uh, yeah, primeval, uh, where they you know, we're more in tune with the planet. I just don't, I don't know, maybe, but I don't see that happening. I think that, uh, that was kind of their spirit giving up and maybe, uh, you know, saying I'm too far away from the plan that I, that I had and, and I don't know how to get back to it. I don't know. Just a thought. So I'm interested to see what your thoughts are. And, and now, you know, I'm a big old nerd and a movie buff and, and, uh, yeah, but I would love to, to get your insights and your thoughts, so please comment or video responses would be very welcome. I would love to hear from you guys, and uh, blessed be.